This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the easiest and most aesthetically pleasing website builder out there. Anyone who has played these games just gets me on a deeper level. My Sims is a Sims spin-off series, say that five times fast, that had six titles over the span of three years. Wow. They're life simulation games, a kind of dumbed down version of The Sims, and were widely popular amongst cutie life sim lovers like myself. I decided that I wanted to revisit the My Sims series and play every single one in order. I've only actually played two of them myself. It brings me back to being 11 years old. You know, CRT on the floor, just got a Wii for Christmas type vibes, crushing cans of Coca-Cola and bags of Doritos, you know, it was a time, it was an era, you had to be there. And now I feel like it's my life calling to play these games once more. The My Sims games came out on both the Wii and Nintendo DS and were eventually ported to PC. Some even had mobile releases too, my god. I'll be playing the Wii version of these games technically on the Wii U because the Wii version of the games are just generally more complete and just you know better. Games on the Wii just have a sort of magic about them, a sense of whimsy. I prefer to play games on their intended consoles and I think motion controls are just cool. The first title in the My Sims series was, you guessed it, My Sims. This life simulation game came out in September of 2007 on the Wii and DS, and later PC and Blackberry phones, if you can believe it. Man, how did that work? You arrive to a rundown town in need of someone to help restore it using the power of essences. I'm gonna name my town Riverdale, because yeah, I've been watching Riverdale lately. Judge me, all you want, but you'll never know the epic highs and lows of high school football. Jesus, maybe we should have named our town Lag City, am I right? I'm playing all the games today through Wii U currently, because the Wii U actually fucking rules, but Trust me, I played this on my regular old Wii, and it's the same experience. Just with an incredibly loud fan that makes it sound like the Wii is gonna fly away. And super fun clicking noises. <laughs> I would play on PC, but honestly, I just love the Wii experience. I love motion controls. The character customization is definitely more elaborate than the other games, and I think that's what makes the first My Sims special. The art style is also what really shines for me. I love love a chibi character, so me. But you get three skin tones and four hair colors to choose from. And it doesn't really get better from here, folks. <laughs> There's a good amount of hairstyles and eyes, but what really makes your My Sims stand out are the accessory and clothing options. There's a lot of face paint options, and my god, so many cute outfit choices. I wanna dress like a My Sim IRL. And in regular Sims fashion, you can customize your character's voice, but why is it so much more detailed than your character's appearance? My god, this is like an insane amount of voice options. Anyways, let's finish customizing little Lissy here and get into the meat and potatoes. Welcome to Riverdale, our quirky little town full of quirky little people. We're gonna first make our way over to the town hall to establish residency, I guess. Mayor Rosalind is so kind as to just give us a house for free. Just kidding. We have to build it ourselves, because apparently the house just straight up doesn't exist. We're given lots of tools to do this task, like building blocks, windows, doors, roofing, tons of little ways to decorate our house. It's not nearly as advanced as like the main Sims games build mode. It's definitely a more toned down version of that. The experience isn't difficult until you want to put something somewhere very specifically, and then the game doesn't let you, because slotting is very limited. I can't live without my BB move objects. <laughs> but this is my house, and now we're stuck with it for a while. Mayor Roslyn then tasks us with fixing the town, essentially. Jeez, that's a big responsibility. So she takes us to our workshop that also doesn't exist. They were definitely not prepared for me, were they? So we built our little workshop and got started with the largest feature of the game, crafting furniture. Look at my chair. That Certainly is a chair. We're gonna plop this in our house and then bug the mayor for more tasks. So now we finally get to utilize our God-given talent, 
essencing. Yeah. Using materials that we gather throughout the world, we're able to paint the furniture that we craft creatively, yes, but mostly to fulfill the quest requirements. Mayor Roslin needs this podium with some apple painted on it. You know, don't mind if I do. I can paint with some apple. So this is my calling, to spread my essence all over this town. The game's main goal, I think, is to raise your star rating. This shithole has zero stars when you get to town, so as you complete fun little tasks for the townies, your rating goes up. As your rating increases, people will come by the hotel and be available for move-in. You'll then need to pick a plot and build them a house or business, whatever they need. Like this guy. We have a, the chef in our town and he cook the pasta. Sometimes townies will ask you to build stuff for them using a lot more essences for the blocks that blueprints call for. This is where you can kind of get a little creative with building objects. As long as when you're building, you fulfill those little star things inside of the blueprint, the object will be created. So you can add as many blocks as you want, take away blocks, whatever you decide. Sometimes I like to add cute little features to the furniture to meet the essence requirements. Other times I find ways to turn one block into 20 blocks. You know, the sky is the limit. As we continue to help new neighbors, we discover all sorts of new ways to gather essences from this little sim world. Gathering essences can be pretty interactive too. The motion controls with the Wiimo is just so natural with these games. I love the Wii. I'm a Wii enthusiast, okay? Motion controls, it just gets the blood pumping. And with each star level, you get to unlock a new region. That means a whole new environment to explore, a new neighborhood where you can put more houses and new essences to collect. We unlocked the saw at level two, giving us access to the forest area. So we can continue to move new townies in, which thankfully gets them out of this corner that they're stuck in and built tons of houses. Not every townie you move in will give you tasks, but you can choose to build stuff for anyone and trick out their house on your own time. There is a sort of socialization system in this game, and if you decorate Sims houses, then it raises their relationship. What that is useful for, I really haven't figured out. Mostly the businesses will send you on actual tasks, and everyone else will just complain about not having a bed or a bathtub or whatever. But unlike the other Sims games, you don't need to do that stuff because there's no needs that need to be met. Like, it's not gonna kill them if they don't have a bed, so I don't care. Star level three gave us a pickaxe, which allows us access to the desert. The desert is so cool. There's so many little areas to explore. Like, look, we can go prospecting in the graveyard. Seems like an insane thing to do, but okay. Isn't it cute that there's little ghost trees in the crypt? Like, who thinks of this stuff? I'm only moving cool people to the desert. No one lame is gonna live in the desert. And look, now that I have a pickaxe, I can go to all sorts of new areas, even within other regions. But you know what is the coolest part about this game? To me, at least. Decorating my own house. Now, this is the reason why I'm attracted to these games in the first place. The Sims, Animal Crossing. I love decorating a little house. Am I gonna actually do all the work to decorate my house? No, <laughs> actually, I'm just gonna steal all the furniture from the other townies and plop that furniture right into my own home. When I figured this out as a kid, it was game over. This game has a ton of creative furniture in it. Each townie comes with a few special pieces, and so yeah, I'm gonna take some of that for myself. I know I'm supposed to be helping this town, but how am I supposed to do that if my house has no swag? Like, come on. I also am not really getting paid. Sometimes it won't let me take stuff though, you know? <laughs> I should have a right to take whatever I want, personally. Personally, you know, look at all the good I've done for this town. Jesus, grinding out the stars is taking forever. But I have been moving in a ton of townies. Some are just normies and others have interesting businesses. And slowly we're unlocking more building blocks using different essences, you know, the works. And with each task, we get new blueprints. Like, it's fun. That's kind of the thing with games like this though. They just get really repetitive for the sake of introducing new aesthetics and objects and characters. Sure, there's quite a quirky cast of characters to move into the town and different furniture that you can unlock, but at the end of the day, we're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. I know a ton of people felt this way about Animal Crossing New Horizons, you know, and it's sort of a turnoff for most people. I'm personally one of those gamers that will open my regular Sims 4, build a house for two hours, and then not really play the game. Like, I just get bored really easily. What really helps these games exceed their short lifespans is the community 
community that is built around them. With New Horizons, the community online thrived for a super long time thanks to the pandemic, and it helped the game with the longevity, you know? It also helps that they continued to add new items for a short time after the game came out, you know, building hype and that sort of thing. I guess I'm just curious as to what the reception of this game, My Sims, would be if it were released now. It doesn't have bad bones, you know, it has very good bones, in fact, but would it be considered boring? after a, a, like a month. Anyways, we're at four stars now, baby. We get access to a blowtorch to unlock the gates that are around our world. Don't know why we didn't maybe just get a lock pick or like a key. You know what? <laughs> I won't ask questions. Check it out. We got a beach with a couple of fishing piers and a cool little junkyard. The junkyard also has a little cave with robots and springs and gears. Ugh, it's just so cute. You don't water these trees, you oil them. Come on. There's a few areas in the forest we can bust open now too, like this big tree with chess piece essences inside and other areas with more chess pieces. This game just has so much personality and into every little thing. This is something that is really special about these titles to me. Even some of the older mainline Sims games have this fun little quirk. Can't really say the same about The Sims 4, am I right, ladies? But I digress. I feel that there's a lot of attention to little details here. Towny behavior is huge. You can always find them hanging around and using the public spaces. They'll just be at each other's houses, just hanging out with one another, you know. It's just cute and really well thought out. But before I knew it, we had grinded out enough tasks, built enough furniture, moved enough sims in to reach the coveted 5 star status. At 5 stars, we get a little credit roll, and according to the wiki, your best friends are supposed to be celebrating with you at the town hall, but I don't think these are my best friends. I actually don't think I have any friends because I didn't bother to give any townies gifts or talk to anybody outside of what was necessary. I think they just threw these randos down so I wouldn't feel bad about myself. Overall, very cool game. I wish it didn't run like absolute fucking trash. I could maybe chalk that up to playing on console instead of PC, but like still. It has very good bones, as I said. Nice. You know, okay, I'm over it. Let's move on to the next game in the series. My Sims Kingdom is my personal favorite of the games that I have played from the My Sims series. It has less of a sandbox feel and more of a linear storyline, but didn't necessarily abandon everything that made My Sims special. I dig it. It came out shortly after the first game in 2008. The character creation is similar to our first My Sims game, but actually a lot more subdued and way less options in almost every category. There are some new hairs, but way less clothing to pick from. And that's because you unlock more clothing as you play the game. King Roland is appointing a new Wandelier, magical Sims who help restore and maintain order in the kingdom. The other one skipped town for some reason, and the kingdom has fallen into disrepair, so the king needs to get off his ass and appoint a new one to fix all his problems. The game features a ton of recurring characters from the first My Sims game, just in a new medieval setting. Like, look, Elmira, she's my evil boss? Stepmother? I don't know. You know, she makes me herd pigs because I'm poor. At least we have actual friends, like Buddy is my friend. He's my buddy, if you will. And Princess Butter is not my friend. She's an entitled brat princess who's gonna apply to be a wandelier too, but... We'll see about that. Buddy dropped his letter, so I gotta help pick them all up, and we get to meet our only other real friend, Lindsay. Both Buddy and Lindsay want me to apply for wandeliership, and you know what? Why not? My life kind of sucks. All I do is gather pigs for Elvira. Elmira. I don't know. She sucks. Whatever. So now we get to face off against the other applicants, which are Barney and Princess Butter. Marlin poofs us off to the tutorial island and gives us fun little tasks to prove our wandelier skills. We pretty quickly get used to the new UI and start building things almost instantly. Building is way different than the previous games and honestly I prefer how it is here because it's really so much more intuitive. We also have a new feature, gadgets to power machines. Ooh. Of course I was the only contestant to actually do anything so once we finished up our tutorial, King Roland announced that I was indeed the new Wandelier. Barney wanted a toaster oven which I think is the only reason he 
came. Lindsay, my friend, got a bag, but we don't know the purpose of it just yet. What we do know is that it is now our duty to help other Sims around our home of Capital Island. After repairing a bridge, we come across a cliff and decide to build stairs to traverse it. But we don't know how to do that, so poof, Marlin's here. Lindsay has this power with her magical bag to unlock new blueprints that I find across the world. The blueprints will have essences required to unlock them, and the first one we need is wood. How do we get wood? Oh. Perfect. My Sims Kingdom makes socialization way more important than the first My Sims game. By socializing, we can convince people throughout the world to do things for us or give us stuff. So, of course, I manipulate Elmira into thinking we're friends so I can have her ex. And boom, we're chopping trees and building stairs. So, of course, we blaze through the first tasks on our home island like mining and unlocking gears and opening gates, building Barney a house so he can have friends over. He wants to show off his new toaster oven, you know. Know. Marlin also makes sure to let us know that if we need more mana to build things, because nothing in this life is free, we can just ask Lindsay to transmute essences into mana if needed. Everything requires mana. Instead of requiring essences to build things in this game, it's all about mana, so that is really helpful. Not only do we get to build exteriors in this game, but we get to decorate interiors as well, just like the first My Sims. However, we don't have to build furniture in the same way that we did in the previous game. In this one, we just unlock the furniture through essence collecting and scrolls and blueprints. Do I prefer this? Well, you know, I'm not sure. Building furniture definitely got super fucking old quick in My Sims 1. We'll see how annoying this system gets by the end of Kingdom. Also, if you prefer to collect essences by pushing buttons instead of interacting with the Wiimote and flailing all around, you can do just that. For a lot of things, not everything. So instead of tiring yourself out, with mining and treasure hunting, you know, you can sit on your ass and be lazy about it. Motion controls are cool, but so is not doing motion controls sometimes. I think this is a way better option for accessibility too, because in the first My Sims, I was trying to figure out if this was an option. I don't know if I looked hard enough or if I tried hard enough. So personally, I just think that this is way better to have the option. Barney's house was our last official tutorial task, and now the king is sending all of us, Buddy, Lindsay, and Buddy's pigeon, Guillermo, on tasks to help Sims around the world. A real adventure. Our goal is to help the people in the kingdom with tasks and gain levels to unlock new places. First up, Renee's Nature Preserve, or her Wild Animal Rescue Nature Safari Petting Zoo Preserve. God, this game is so cute! It's a zoo where you can feed the animals candy. But it's not done yet, of course. In fact, there's hardly anything here at all. Some tour, huh? So of course we gotta help her get this business up to par. First we'll build her a welcome center, next we get to repair the bull ride, free some imprisoned crabs, build a bridge and nature walk, reunite some bears, and build a cat named Miss Prissykins, a beautiful cat tower. You know, so she can monitor the park guests. While on Renee's island we did learn a few new methods for obtaining essences. For instance, Fishing. Yes, we can fish in this My Sims game as well, but it is different than the prior title. Fishing is more like Animal Crossing in this game, where you have to wait for your bobber to bob down and then yank it up to get fishies, you know? Also, every time you get a new fish, you can bring them back to Barney and get cool new stuff. Transmuting is so useful too. Oh my god, I'm always running out of mana. And I do the bare minimum too. <laughs> and before we knew it, Renee no longer needed our help. The park looked good, so we're moving on to our next island, Cowboy Junction. Yeehaw! There's such a lovely cast of characters on this island, and it's full of random tasks that we have to do for them. We're subjected to yet another tour, this time from Chef Gino, if you remember him, and with the help of Gabby, we help him get his pizza operation up and running. Apparently, varmints stole all his stuff, you know, as they do. So we get to learn about axles and water pumps and sprinklers and such. I really love that you you don't need to meet an essence quota in this game, I much prefer the mana system. It just got super tiring trying to find workarounds to include as many essences as possible to meet requirements. There is a little bit of that because there are certain requirements when you're like building exteriors and adding furniture, but in general it's just more fun because it's not like I'm trying to find workarounds to include certain things, you know? No longer do I have to figure out a way to incorporate 25 essences into an object that can be built with just five blocks. It was exhausting. Helping Roxy herd these cows literally took me 10 minutes, what the 
Fuck! Get in there! But hey, that pushed us over the edge to level two, out of five, I think. And we unlocked a new island to visit. But we're not finished here on Cowboy Junction. Now that we're done with Gino's tour, we learn that he's got a little secret, a special ingredient, if you will. Lucky horseshoes. Gabby will apparently sell him one every two weeks, but unfortunately, a bandit came and snatched this one up. So I guess we're not getting any pizza. But we do get to investigate this thievery. By collecting clues, we were able to figure out that the culprit was indeed the guy with the bandana. Apparently he's stealing because he has no friends. Of course, the sheriff wants to be his friend, but she's so annoying that I guess I have to convince him to be nice to her? Misogyny. Everywhere. I'm team sheriff, baby. So I guess we're gonna build him a house, or tent rather, and he'll apologize to his fellow townies in Cowboy Junction, and all is well in the world. Our next big island is Rocket Reef, where Dr. F needs our help, since his rocket lab pretty much exploded, and his robot went all Blade Runner on him. I'm trying to get the robot his legs back, but it's proving to be an impossible possible task. Find a path, damn it. The scientists want to send their employee Vic into space because he's cheaper than a monkey, and Tobor, the robot, wants to follow his dreams of opening a restaurant. While Vic trains up, we of course help our boy Tobor and get a laboratory constructed. We're unlocking so many cool objects, I love it. And then we're ready for launch, except Vic is terrified of going since his death is pretty much guaranteed, but Oh my god, I have to convince him to go? That's horrible. But, you know, I guess that's the way I bear as Wandelier. So we built the rocket, Vic got suited up, and he was off into space. Luckily, he did not die, and Dr. F did not press the self-destruct button because he came down and expanded our map and even offered to give us cool stuff in exchange for any figurines I find in the world. I have stumbled across quite a few collectibles. I still have seven more islands to go, and we kind of get the gist of the game thus far, so I'll give you a rundown of some improvements and things I really enjoy about Kingdom. First of all, it runs astronomically better than my Sims. That game ran like literal dog shit. It was bogged down with loading screens and the UI was extremely clunky. Now I did not play the PC or DS or even Blackberry versions of these games, so I can't really attest to that. But anyways, Kingdom runs amazingly smooth and the controls feel like butter, honestly. Major improvements there. And I do like the construction mode in this game a lot more, especially for exteriors. And something that I super love about Kingdom is that you are not as heavily restricted with item slotting. You can place items a lot more freely than before and have a ton more customization you can do because of that. Super sick. Interiors are so much easier to do now since you don't have to craft every single individual piece of furniture. The mechanical and gear portion of this game is really fun too. I like making contraptions work whether by gear, water, electrical power. It's just cool and it makes it feel less like it's just a build me a house simulator. Loving the socialization aspect of this game too. These sims are weird, man. And the dialogue options are not totally obvious because some of them are so strange, like in general, and I feel like it adds so much more depth to the characters. Overall, the sims in this game just have so much life to them. Their stories are actually interesting. <clears throat> Looking at you, Sims 4. I like that you can go back and do little side quests by collecting items in the world, like armor, for the night dude and figurines for Vic. There's also clothing that you can unlock, which makes up for the bleak clothing options we got at the beginning of the game. And it's sort of fun to go and search for all these different unlockables. So after completing a few smaller islands, we reached level four. One more level to go now. King Roland has informed us that not only do we have more islands to unlock, but some of the islands that we've already visited might have more tasks for us. That's great for late game, for sure. Look, we ran into Mira Roslyn. She runs an Academy Island. Like, how neat is that? One of the students, Chaz, apparently threw all the desks aside because he wanted to make room to film his movie called Chaz the Movie. You know what? He's bold. I like it. So we put them back and then got ready for the big dance that is coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'd rather help my boy Chaz with his spinny contraption, but I guess I gotta play matchmaker to the students of this academy too. Oh, wait. 
I gotta pick who this guy goes to the dance with? Okay, shit, well, I, I guess it worked out, and my boy Chaz won prom king, so I would say this is pretty successful. Buddy seems happy too. All right, I am blazing through the next few islands because the best part of this game is so close, and I just wanna get to it. There's still quite a bit of story and random decorating tasks left, but you don't need to do absolutely everything to unlock your very own island. That's your reward for completing the game, an island you can decorate however you please with no mana limit. It's the best cherry on top for me. All you need to do is reach five stars and boom, there we go. We got five stars slash levels. Yeah, it's kind of a big deal. Roll credits. But in all seriousness, this is my favorite My Sims title that I've personally played. God, it just slaps so hard still to this day. I feel like a ton of thought went into this one's story and it doesn't get dull and repetitive as you play because of it. It's totally my type of game too, because not only is there a little bit of a story element, but there's tons of decorating, and that's just my favorite part about Life Sims. It gets an A plus from me. But it's time to move on to our next game, or games. There's still a lot more of these, even after this magnum opus, if you can believe it. All right, let's get into My Sims Party. Released in 2009 on the Wii and Nintendo DS. It's a party game with a My Sims spin on it. Your sim moves into a rundown town and participates in festivals to help bring new townies in. The character creation is so painful. Oh my god. A spinny wheel every time I want to switch to a new thing. Please just kill me. That took so long. Oh my god. Let's name our sim and get out of dodge. Oh wow. You have a house in this game too. How exciting. Oh god, wait. You don't move with the joystick? You have to point and click A? Oh, Jesus, that is so awful. Why wouldn't we want nunchuck compatibility? Because multiplayer, who cares? I looked it up online and apparently there is nunchuck compatibility, um, but it's not working, so I don't know. Oh well. Buddy is here to guide us to the festival and now we can get started. And yes, I'm playing a party game by myself. Gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. All right, let's get into these mini games. Oh, I can't move. Why can't I move? <laughs> I'm trying everything I can here, guys. I just can't move. Oh my god, this is such a flop. Okay, I'm gonna try another nunchuck and hopefully I'll be able to get this working. Actually, wait, maybe I should have just read the fucking instructions and then I would have known I just have to turn my Wiimote sideways, actually. Hey guys, I never said I was smart, so... All right, last mini game. let's get it. Okay, this one is super easy. I crushed all three rounds. Dumb computers, suck it. Okay, sick. So we managed to win even after our first minigame flop, so that's neat. And we unlocked a bunch of new stuff. Chef Gino moved into our town. We can't go inside, but still really neat. And we could place little monuments that we win all around our little town, which is so awesome. My Sims Party is a cute little party game. Nothing insanely special, but it's not like it's bad or anything. I'm just a Mario party truther, you know, but I could see myself picking this one up every once in a while. It does have its own unique way of doing things. As you play, you unlock more festivals to participate in and new mini games to unlock. It features many of our favorite characters from the My Sims universe. It's just cute, you know? Some of the mini games even have super interesting motion controls, which, you know, tickles my brain. Even though it's kind of awkward and hard to maneuver at first, you get used to it. Sometimes you get special events in between rounds. I like that you can decorate your town and move people in. It just makes it feel a little less like a party game skin and more like it belongs in the My Sims universe. I can imagine it would be fun with more people instead of playing by yourself. I have no friends. Please be nice to me. But we're not here to thoroughly review spinoffs of the spinoff, so let's move on to another spinoff, actually, My Sims Racing. Released in 2009 as well, geez, they were just pumping these out, weren't they? It also had a Wii and DS version. The intro is exactly the same as My Sims. There's a town that once had a lot of racers in it, but they all moved away. And so the leftover residents hope for a new racer to move into town to revitalize it. 
And that's where we come in. The cast is pretty standard. There's fewer options, especially in hair, but some pretty fun options are included, like bigger hairs and hats. And then the car customization is actually pretty detailed. You can customize your cart in a lot of ways, and there's tons of paint colors, even at the start of the game. I think these customizations are just aesthetic, and you can add on things later that will actually help you with you know, the racing thing. On the tutorial track, I played with Nunchuck and Wiimote, and it wasn't bad at all. You can drift with B, and it took me a second to get used to it, but eventually I was drifting hard. Why on God's green earth would we put collector's flags in these little barriers? This is so hard. Look at that, it works with the Wii wheel too. And there's jumping. Wow, it's like a real racing game. You can collect essences on the track too and get F energy and boosts. The drift is super weird on the Wii wheel though. It's just one instead of B and one. And I can't quite get it down as good as I could with the nunchuck. They save B just for speed boosting. That's it. I feel like if there's a pinnacle racing game on a console that is like a household name and probably one of the most universally played games in the world, and you release a racing game on that same console, you should just keep the controls the same. Like maybe don't switch buttons up, you know? Oh great! Story time. Apparently Morcubus, a My Sims Universe bad looking guy, is the bad guy in this game. And we won't be seeing the last of him. Except for we will because I'm not going to finish this game. <laughs> the tracks are pretty cool. They vary from time trials to item collecting to versus races and even whatever the fuck this is that my entire map is flipped and the controls are backwards. Fuck that, honestly. <laughs> but I really don't care to fully play the story mode of a racing game in this video. It's kind of boring, honestly, when I could just go play Mario Kart. It's not bad, just not something I'm interested in sinking my entire entire day into right now. So we're moving on to our next My Sims game. You guys have hyped this game up so much. I'm excited to see if it's actually good. I never picked this one up when I was a kiddo. My Sims Agents came out in 2009, just like My Sims Party and Racing, and it was on the Wii and DS. It's more of a platformer inspired take on the franchise. It's very heavily story based and themed around being a special agent. Duh. Hey look, it's Buddy! Older Buddy, I guess. He's narrating this all Titanic style. He's an author recalling the real sim life story of his best-selling comic book, featuring me, of course. The character creation is surprisingly even less complex than My Sims Kingdom was. There's fewer hair and clothing options, I'm pretty sure, less hair colors. Well, it's not important, I guess. Let's just pick something and move on. I guess we're a low-level detective just trying to make it in this big ol' city. Oh wow, we're actually talking. Like, we have real dialogue. We broke our vow of silence? That's pretty epic, jeez. I talk a lot though. Our first case, save Poppy's dog from a mean man. Who is this mean man, you may ask? Well, it's Morcubus again. He does have a pretty mean mug. They both claim the dog is theirs, so I gotta get to the bottom of this case, like a good little detective. Apparently I have to have really real proof that the dog is Poppy's, so we just grab a few pieces of evidence, and of course the dog does indeed belong to Poppy, not Morcubus. He seems really mad though. And I'll rue the day, blah 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 blah. This guy is waiting for me back at Gino's Pizzeria, and he informs me that Morcubus kind of fucking sucks. He's the owner of Morky Corp, which owns most of the city, and this guy is apparently a real detective looking to recruit me to stop him? I guess? Cool. Not sure. Now I am officially a part of the Sims Protective Agency, or SPA for short. I am now a junior agent and ready to take on more cases and work my way up to stopping Morcubus. Not just from stealing dogs, but from landlord mobster and CEO activities. So now we are free to start taking on cases and solving mysteries. The first one I took was to find out who put a bouquet in front of Shirley's salon, and try to figure out which of the three guys who bought bouquets that day did it. Patrick seems innocent enough to me, especially after investigating his house, but the mayor is a different story. He seems like a sketchy dude, so I of course need to hack his computer. Yeah. 
seems morally correct. The hacking is done by pointing the Wemo at the screen and guiding the pointer towards the end of the maze. You gotta be quick and not shaky like me. So of course we find some sketchy shit on this guy's computer and we got to rule Gino out since he proved he used the flowers he bought as pizza toppings. Who am I to judge? I did find a secret love note at the scene, so I want to compare it to a sample of the mayor's handwriting, but I guess everything he's ever written is inside his locked safe. Asking for the combination nicely didn't go great, so I had to hardcore parkour my way up to spy on him through the window. While snooping through a safe, I found out that this dude is bought and sold by none other than Morcubus. You know, the bad guy. Oh, and he totally wrote the love letter to Shirley. But wow, the corruption runs deep in this city, man. Super bleak. Shirley didn't care much about all that. She was just stoked to have a secret admirer. This overarching storyline can wait, though. We're still a low-level detective, and there's plenty of petty crime out there. As I make my way through cases, I'm also learning new ways to solve them, like salvaging parts to repair machinery, climbing rooftops, digging through trash, of course. We also unlocked a new region, the forest, and explored there in search of clues too. Everything goes back to Morky Corp, doesn't it? I like how there's a little Scooby-Doo-esque cutscene after you solve each mystery, with a whole little explanation and everything. As if we didn't just figure all this out moments ago. After all my hard work, we made it to rank special agent and are even getting our own headquarters to work out of. Perfect, because I don't think I even have a place to live, so I guess this is fine. Oh my god, why is this so nice? This is like James Bond level, what is happening? We have all the essentials here, guys, like a place to change clothing, you know, the important stuff. We also have a Roxy, who is our chemist and can analyze suspicious material. And now we also have the ability to hire on more agents to take down Morky Corp. So we can recruit people to the new little agent task force and send them on missions. Since, you know, I can't do everything. I'm busy taking down Big Mork. But it is cool that you can kind of guide your agents through texts and calls on your very own cell phone. Wow. It's sort of like a side thing. We're slowly but surely cracking this case, guys, and learning new methods for solving the big Morky Corp mystery along the way. We learned that in our most recent recent case for the mysterious Evelyn that Morky Corp was interested in a doctor's journal. The doctor being her dad and the mayor helped him steal it. It was kind of satisfying catching him in this little lie. That guy sucks. But now we've just got even more leads to look into and not a lot of answers. Our biggest lead is to find a new guy named PW. This game is reminding me a lot of the Lego games. God, those are so good. This one is very different than the other other My Sims games, but not necessarily in a bad way. It is way more story driven and with prior knowledge of the My Sims universe, very fun to interact with these characters more than before. The agents I've been recruiting are off doing special missions and reporting back. Very often, honestly, they're kind of getting on my nerves. But on my search for PW, I found a Yeti in the mountains who seems like a nice enough dude, honestly. He told me a lot of information about his time working in a lab, actually, with more cubus and Evelyn's doctor dad. They had made a crown of nightmares that Morcubus apparently wants really bad, but didn't end up getting. Okay, stay mad. So maybe that's his big goal. Okay, we got some tool upgrades and now we are cooking. This is what I want from a My Sims game decorating. There are multiple floors on the HQ and each one can be decorated with furniture to boost the stats of the recruits assigned to those floors. So we can strategically decorate and paint. Not sure how important aesthetics are, but I don't even really have enough furniture right now to even worry about that. And look at that. We found some old friends in the area. We just unlocked the industrial district. It's a freaking dump around here. But we now have new capabilities that came with our tool upgrades like picking locks, which has its own cute little mini game like the other things, and activating Fenergy events, F energy, Fenergy, that moves objects around. However, we are really here to look into this laboratory thing that's a part of our main goal to take down Morky Corp. But there's nothing to really investigate here, so Dr. F upgraded my magnifying glass and I went to chat with some Morky Corp cronies. I was trying to help them figure out 
out why DJ's candy equipment was destroying their plants, and I went on this whole quest just to find out that they were the ones that set the whole thing up. Gosh, you just can't trust bad guys, can you? There is no plant-killing conspiracy. They were the ones doing it. I didn't even really figure out why they wanted to do that, but it successfully wasted my time. Back to the base. I like that throughout the game you can unlock clothing, furniture, etc, etc, but the character customization is super weird and has more loading screens than anything else in the game. Sending agent recruits on missions is interesting, you know, something fun to do on the side, but so annoying. Every few minutes, I'm not kidding, there will be a new phone call, and only some will have options where you can choose from to influence the results of the mission, but most will just be quirky dialogue and, more importantly, unnecessary dialogue. It's more obnoxious than anything. I've also been trying to experiment with decorating the different floors of my base. It is by far the clunkiest decorating mechanics of any other My Sims game so far. Having your base decorated will help with the success of dispatch missions, but what it comes down to is that it's really not all that creatively free. It just kind of feels out of place in comparison to the other games. I did manage to solve another smaller mystery for DJ Candy, and in doing so, I foiled some Morky Corp plans to replicate Fortunite crystals. Apparently, that is the crystal that is needed to make the Nightmare Crown that we found out about earlier. And after helping Poppy find some of her missing letters, she decided to give us her invitation to a mysterious party that happens to have one of these crystals on display. Everyone came to check out its magical properties, but someone smashed it to pieces. So now we gotta figure out who the culprit is. And pretty much immediately, I start suspecting the zombie zombie butler. God, butlers do get a lot of shit in murder mysteries, don't they? We even staged a whole reenactment of the crime to come to our conclusion, but Carl, the zombie butler, is super upset at my allegations and claims he didn't do it. So was he set up? I guess I'll play good cop today and look into it. Carl has been hearing voices through the fence, and turns out Zoe is a professional hypnotist. Maybe he did smash the crystal, but he wasn't even aware of it? I don't know. After some exploring and secret passaging, I found out there were fake Fortunite crystals all up in this bitch, hidden away, and even the one that was smashed was fake. So she totally set him up to keep the real Fortunite for herself, and then just kind of gave it to me since she had been had, I guess. Okay, sick. And now I am on the hunt to find the real Crown of Nightmares again. And that search led me to the beach where I found some broken surfboards and a new case. Who broke them is the question, and why is everybody trying to blame Chaz? He is my bias, so he can do no wrong in my eyes. I have to clear his name. Chaz is my boy, and turns out he wasn't even responsible for this. It was a giant octopus named Mr. Suckers, so suck on that, haters. And while I was trying to figure out who broke a bunch of crap pots on the beach, I discovered a Morky Corp henchwoman who had been operating a submarine in the area. What exactly is she looking for? Luckily, I also have access to a submersible, apparently, and that's Tobor, our friendly neighborhood robot. He's just gonna platform his way around this ocean cave or whatever it is and try to figure out whatever Yuki, our Morky Corp girly, is looking for. This maze took me 100 years, by the way. Oh my god. But it was worth it because we found a shipwreck and that had a hidden map of the jungle. So no crown, but a note on the back indicates that that is where the crown may have been hidden all along. Jungle time! My friends and I arrived to find a fun little temple and our hired tour guide is actually actually Lindsay. I knew this game was missing something, jeez. But he was doing too much heavy lifting without her. This temple has four pedestals that I need to collect little items for and represents the four elements. I'll need the help of humans and even lemurs to collect each item and activate the pedestals. And boom, look at that. We got a path into this temple now. Oh god, how long has this guy been here? Wait, don't go. Uh, I guess I gotta go follow him. The first room in the temple, fire. Look at us. 
utilizing our skills that we have learned until this point. Amazing. Second room, wind. I hate balancing ropes. This shit sucks. I found the guy, Mike, in the water room, and he's gone all castaway on me, asking for me to help him find a new friend. And only then he'll help me. So I give him some coconuts, which he loved, thankfully, and gave me the parts to fix this water contraption. And now we raise that bridge. It leads directly to a chest, and after we pick the lock, we open it to reveal a rock. Oh, turns out it is the key, though, to getting the Nightmare Crown. But it is a rock. And there it is. Finally, we found it and can keep it safe from Morcubus. And turns out, Mike is actually Evelyn's dad, who is totally not dead, but instead was just trapped in a jungle temple this whole time. If you don't remember Evelyn, that's okay. She hasn't really been very important, but regardless, she's still a bad bitch. This father-daughter moment is kind of cute. But what's not cute is that Morcubus actually totally followed us here. He pretty much let us do all the dirty work. And I guess I just handed over the nightmare crown. Okay, then. And then I just let him activate it. And now a comic book cutscene? Are we fucking serious? Wait, what? Wait, where's the action? And... What? And now Evelyn's just gone? We're not even gonna go save her? What the? Why wouldn't we just go save her? What? What is happening? Wait, roll credits? You're joking. You're actually joking. They seriously want me to do dispatch missions, like literal side quests, so I can finish the main story? Oh, uh, that is the most dog shit writing I have seen in a really long time. I'm so mad, actually. I'm, I'm not even gonna finish the game. I'm so sorry. Moving on to the last console My Sims game that was made, My Sims Sky Heroes. Released in 2010 on a ton of consoles, actually, more than just Wii and DS. We had PS3 and Xbox 360 releases too. This game went in a totally different direction than the other My Sims games. It's a plain shooty game, but let's be fair, let's at least try. There's both a campaign and a quick play mode, so we'll start with the campaign and character creation. It's sort of similar to the previous games, but something that's really pissing me off is that so far, there's no utilization of the motion controls at all. At least not yet. I'm assuming it will change once we, you know, fly. But it's just annoying to put a game on the Wii and all of the previous titles utilize motion controls a ton and you start this one and it feels like it was made more for a little boy with his Xbox. The My Sims games are for girls who play with Wiimotes. Okay, end rant. I really do want to give this game a shot. You get to design your plane and having it be this complex of a UI and not have anything unlocked yet is weird. Like I'm clicking through all these options and I don't have most of them unlocked. I did get to paint my plane and change a few things and name my plane. So let's get this campaign going. Oh boy, Morcubus is the bad guy in this game too. And I'm washed up on shore somewhere. The Sims love washing people up on shore, don't they? <laughs> Anyways, I guess I'm being taken back to a rebel base led by Justice, and they're giving me a plane now, too. What if I didn't even know how to fly a plane? Then what? Turns out it's not that hard. You control with the joystick, no motion controls, which I know I was dogging on the lack of motion controls two seconds ago, but having the entire flight mechanics be motion controls would probably be really annoying, I imagine. So you use them to just do cute little stunts. Anyways, they gave me a few objectives, like reaching checkpoints and taking down more cute cronies. I don't know guys, it's not really hitting in the uh, Lego Star Wars way that they wanted it to, which I think is what they were going for. I think the worst part about this is that you don't even walk around or anything. Like you don't have a little guy, a little my sim. There's no house. Everything is done through map selection and dialogue, and it's like you don't even matter. You're just a pawn to make the little plane go fly and shoot. It's sad, actually. I also kind of fucking suck at this too. You know what, guys? 
I'm tapping out. This game actually is not my thing. I don't think it was made for me, honestly. I'm even kind of missing my Sims agents right now. That's how not into this I am. So what happened? Why aren't they making my Sims games anymore? It seems that the people behind my Sims or, you know, the corporation, EA for that matter, kind of lost sight of what made my Sims special in the first place. Sure, there's a whole My Sims universe now with all sorts of different games and many different genres, which can be cool in a sense, but it probably made a ton of people distrust the franchise because of the inconsistency. I imagine that, you know, when I was a kid, if I had begged my dad to buy My Sims Agents or something, Sky Heroes even, oh my God, and then had actually played them and realized that I wasted my little kid video game budget on something that wasn't the vibe, that wasn't giving my Sims or my Sims Kingdom, I'd be pissed. EA has a massive problem with just milking and cashing in their IPs as much as possible. I mean, any Sims 4 fan is gonna have plenty to say about this. So it's not necessarily shitting on them if it's true, you know, I, I don't know. You can see that degradation so clearly with how they treated the My Sims franchise. They really took what they could from it and tossed it in the trash as soon as it wasn't doing the same numbers. I understand that you're running a business, but I don't know how you can run a successful business and continuously disappoint your customers. The first two games really have so much to offer for us life simulation lovers. Aside from its insane performance issues on the Wii, at least, the original My Sims is charming and it's just so unique. You can really do a lot more in that game than you think and the characters and environment have so much charm and pizzazz, you know, it's, it's wonderful. But I really have to give it to my sims kingdom if i were to recommend a my sims game to you it would be that one it's the perfect blend of sandbox and story to me it'll be quite a few hours you know before you're bored of it i'm not really so sure why everybody was riding for my sims agent so intensely i think that it's just dependent on what type of games you enjoy you know to be fair for me it was a little too much story and not enough creative mode you feel? But hey, to each their own. You know, I at least almost finished it. <laughs> God, I will never get over how awful that ending was. The other games, Party Racing and Sky Heroes are certified flops in my mind. They are so not my thing. I'm in the camp of, if we're gonna play a party game, let's whip out Mario Party. If we're gonna play a racing game, let's whip out Mario Kart. So not trying to say that the My Sims versions are bad necessarily, it's just not unnecessary to me in my mind. I have a hardcore bias, I love my Mario. Kind of like when I reviewed Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, it's not necessarily a terrible game that everybody shits on so hardcore. I thought it was perfectly fine and a good concept, but was it like revolutionizing anything? No, it just exists. So take with that what you will. Sky Heroes though, that game really fucking sucks. Now I'm just thinking about how awesome Lego Star Wars is, man. Okay, if we were to bring my Sims back how would it work? I think that a game like the original My Sims would do super well nowadays, especially with how popular Animal Crossing-esque games have become over the last couple years alone. Kingdom is amazing, that's my favorite one, but maybe just like a little too story-driven for what I'm imagining. I feel like there's a ton of customization that people really love in the first My Sims game. If it was better graphics, even more customization, not really in the furniture building category, I'm gonna be honest, but like in the house decorating category. And with the same kind of item slotting and building mode that My Sims Kingdom has, more unlockables like how My Sims Kingdom has, oh, a multiplayer, it would destroy. So like Animal Crossing New Horizons, but with a My Sims skin. <laughs> I guess that's what I want, I don't know. You guys know I have a hardcore preference, okay? Like this is nothing new, this is my bias. For now, all we have is the memory of my Sims and the collectible figurines you can get in The Sims 4. I just hope that this isn't the end. It, I, it has a lot of potential to me. Before I close this video out, I would love to give 
a huge thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace. If you are somebody that needs a website, Squarespace is the best place to start. They have so many beautiful templates to choose from in a multitude of different categories. You could be a blogger, an artist, a restaurant, and so many more. It's also incredibly easy to customize the website and personalize it to whatever you need. Take my website, for instance. Yes, I have a website. I use it to get my useful information out to the people, all my Animal Crossing codes for my Animal Crossing islands. I got my Stardew Valley mods on there that I use. And it really did not take me long to figure out how to get my website exactly how I wanted it. Have you been working on a side hustle? In this economy, Squarespace makes it super easy to generate revenue, sell products on your website with ease, or take advantage of the members-only areas. You can post exclusive members-only content for your community and monetize it through Squarespace. Squarespace has so many different tools for helping any small business owner, influencer, just about anybody get their web presence on track. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash list the last, or you can just use code list the last and get 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much for enjoying my My Sims video. My My Sims. What was your favorite My Sims game? Are you going to play My Sims after this? Are you feeling inspired? What's the vibe? You know, what do you got going on? Tell me all your thoughts. If I got anything wrong, if I got anything so, so right. If you disagree with me about agents, oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. Don't forget to check out all my other social medias. And if you liked this video, make sure you check out maybe, oh, my Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival one. Yes, I mentioned that in this video. That is a thorough review of Animal Crossing amiibo festival if you are interested i hope you're having a great day and you continue to do so and i will see you in the next one